What's up guys, Kyle Visuals here and today we are going to talk about how you can make your footage more silky smooth buttery goodness by getting it extra stabilized. Let's do it. Alright guys, so what are some tips and some pieces of gear that you can utilize to make your footage look more stabilized? Let's run through it. So first and foremost, I want to talk about this beautiful piece of gear here. This is a newer shoulder mount. I absolutely love this shoulder mount and this rig. It's super easy to set up. It's amazing to use, guys. You're super fast and mobile on your feet. As you can see from this footage here, you know, I'm able to hold it in all different types of way, directly on my shoulder, down at the waist, um, even lower, you know, by my ankles and feet. I'm able to hold it in unique ways um, and still get really stabilized footage. One of the big keys here, guys, is finding a way to stabilize your footage and keeping your hands off your camera. If you can get your hands off your camera, that's going to help prevent that shake. Um, just because, you know, naturally you have a little, little shake with your hands. Um, and so using this shoulder rig, I'm able, again, even if I'm holding at the hip, I might not have my hands in the proper placements on the shoulder rig. Um, but because I have it, you know, close to hip, close to body, and I'm not directly touching the camera, I'm able to prevent that shake, um, and it makes the footage more stabilized. Uh, I, again, I really like this rig um, simply because it's super versatile, it's really easy to set up, it's great for guerrilla warfare style filmmaking. If you're doing, if you're a one man band, or you're working with a really small budget or small crew, it's extremely fast, efficient, and it gets you incredibly great quality content. The next stabilizer I want to talk about is the GlideCam. GlideCam HD2000 is what I personally use. Now there's different makes and models that you can use. Um, I know a lot of people kind of go with the Devon Super Tramp, which is probably the best. However, um, you know, I bought mine at a time when budget was extremely low, aka in college, aka no money. <laughs> Anyways, I highly recommend getting a GlideCam. Glide cams are incredible for getting really smooth uh, footage, uh, great for tracking shots, following shots, um, anything like that, especially if you want to simulate um, something like a dolly, a push in or a pull out, you know, you can kind of get that almost exact same effect by doing it with the glide cam. You might just need to throw on like a warp stabilizer effect in post-production just to kind of smooth it out, clean it up a little bit. Um, but again, what, what I really love about the glide cam is you can move really fast, efficiently, just like the shoulder mount. Um, except here, you're getting a lot smoother footage. You know, with the shoulder mount, you're picking up those footsteps, so you're seeing that level change in the camera ever so slightly. Whereas with the glide cam, you're not necessarily seeing the level change because you know you're able to keep it smooth and stabilized, and you can make that transition um, in regards to the levels or when you're taking steps. It's more smooth and gradual, you know, so it's it, it's a smoother transition. Whereas shoulder mount is kind of just janky up and down, um, and again, so it's just providing a lot a lot smoother uh, imagery. Um, and something uh, something again I really like about the glide cam uh, compared to gimbals is you get more personal control. Where gimbals, you know, feel more robotic. Um, you know, it just kind of goes up in this direction or if you're panning up and down, you know, it's just, it's very simplistic, the movement, whereas the glide cam, you know, you can kind of give it like a little wave style, you can make it really slow, then fast, you know, you can personally in camera kind of make your own transitions and effects with this piece of gear. And so I really like utilizing that. Next piece of gear I want to talk about is the Ronin S or any gimbals in general. Gimbals are great for stabilizing your footage, guys. They're gonna get you really silky smooth footage. Um, quick note here to mention, um, you wanna check with your lenses. Um, a lot of these lenses come with image stabilization. However, you wanna switch that off if you're using a gimbal. A lot of these cameras, um, if you use image stabilization and you shoot something on a tripod or a gimbal, and then you try to use warp stabilizer in post, um, if you wanna try to smooth it out even more, it's gonna look really, really messed up. Um, there's just something with the system there you really just want to make sure that you're turning that vibration control or image stabilization you know depending on what lens you have they'll name it differently but you want to turn that off if you're utilizing a gimbal now taking that forward um, what I really love about gimbals again is yes it can have that remote robotic feel but that's okay because is they're great for very unique and specific shots again pushing in pulling out anything with kind of a dolly movement or effect if you're trying to simulate something of a crane or something like that, they're incredibly useful for that matter. Again, gimbals are great for just overall shooting. They can give you really smooth, uh, incredible, stabilized shots. 
Um, however, just remember that they have a specific purpose um, and so there's just a lot of people out there you know just using gimbals for every single shot and understand that you don't need to um, and it actually can kind of hinder uh, the overall shot quality when you utilize it for instance if you're shooting a close-up you do not need a gimbal you should be doing that handheld and maybe you go to 60 FPS or 30 FPS you know you don't necessarily need to shoot that with a gimbal it's just it's, it's overdoing it, um, and, and at the end of the day, it can cause problems and, and cause issues for you in post-production. All right, y'all, next piece of stabilization we'll talk about is a tripod. Tripods, as well as, let's go ahead and throw it in there, monopods. Monopods and tripods are great for stabilizing your image. Um, they can make about the most stabilized image you can get. <laughs> Completely still. Um, what I really love about using these pieces of gears. Yes, they give you a great stable image. They're really, really awesome and perfect for getting those big, wide establishing shots, you know, setting your scene. Um, if you're shooting a film or maybe it's a travel piece or a documentary, it's great for introducing people to the platform, the field, the plane. Um, you know, if it's a travel video in Iceland, you know, you might want to open up with a drone shot or a wide shot, you know, establishing where you're at, where you're, excuse me, or open with a wide shot, establishing where you're at in Iceland, you know, and then you move to the medium shots and the close-up showing the details of the landscape and the countryside that you're traveling through. Um, and so they're great for that. Additionally, what I really love is you can utilize Ken Burns. So although you're shooting something flat and stationary, you can use Ken Burns in post-production to go ahead and make it feel like camera movement, you know? So if you have the ability to shoot in 4K and you want to export a 1080p, well, you can shoot a bunch of video at 4K on a tripod, then take it in post, um, and you can actually, you know, since you'll be cropping into 1080, you have a bunch of extra space then that you can work with, create Ken Burns, you know? So you can use keyframes and punch in, or you can pull out, or you can, you know, slowly panning uh, down and to the right. You know, there's different little effects that you can do, and all of a sudden, you know, you just went from having a stationary shot to a shot with really smooth movement. And so that's, again, just another reason why I enjoy and really like using tripods. Another piece of gear I'm gonna talk about here, similar to tripods, using uh, you know something like this, a Gorillapod, a Joby. Um, those are really nice for vlogging, um, for handheld stuff if you wanna use your hand. Um, they're great for doing, uh, you know again, stationary shots, um, but say you don't have a tripod, uh, you're really limited in what, what gear you can bring, um, or you know there's just something in the way, like a tree or something like that. Gorillapods are great for kind of getting in those nooks and crannies or working around these tight little spaces where a tripod or a monopod could not work. Um, and so I really like having those with me on the go simply because, again, you know, they're a great safety net um, for getting you in those tight spaces or getting you that, you know, that perfect, smooth, stabilized and level. Let's talk about that level shot. <laughs> All right. And so it's really nice having something like that. My last piece of stabilization I'm going to talk about this right here. Now I'm going to talk about this more in a different YouTube video. This is the peak design um, leash right here. Um, but anyways, just overall talking about um, neck strap in general, that can be a great piece of stabilization. Guys, when I'm traveling, when I'm on the go and out of the country, I don't bring any pieces of gear for stabilization except this. This is it. Um, and my biggest piece and secret here is bam, locking it out just like this. <laughs> And so what that's going to do is create a lot of tension. So when you don't have this here and you're walking, you're moving, this is moving a lot too. When you create tension here and you're moving, it's locked in. So it's a lot smoother. So it's really going to stabilize your image and make it just overall, again, a lot smoother, a lot buddier, a lot crispier, just really appealing to the human eye. Um, and so I really love that piece of gear because again, it is the fastest, the most efficient and quickest and overall like just in regards to efficiency, it is the best stabilization piece of gear I have ever seen on the market. Um, you know, you, I can literally take it on and off my camera in a matter of 10 seconds. Um, and this piece can stabilize, you know, the image so much more than just shooting it directly handheld. 
Um, you know, so I really love it because it's versatile, it's fast, it's really, really easy to set up and to take on and off your camera. Um, and again, even better than the Joby, you know, it's even smaller and more lightweight. Um, so especially for long trips on the go, travel videos, um, for long periods on set, it's not gonna strain you or cause issues or tension or anxiety. Um, and also, it, again, kind of taking it back to the Joby, you know, it's even smaller, um, so you can fit into those nooks and crannies, those tight spaces. You don't have a big piece of gear that's in the way. Um, also taking it further, you know, if you're traveling on the go or, or somewhere where people don't necessarily like to be filmed um, or where you don't wanna be drawing attention to yourself, it's great for that because it's so small. You know, you're not walking in with this big old, you know, stabilized uh, gimbal system and an easy rig coming over top. You know, you're really small and, and just like a normal human that might just be walking around with their cell phone. You know, you're you're not that noticeable. Um, and so that can be really, really awesome, um, especially if you're doing travel videos, you know, because a lot of time you want to have that fly on the wall effect um, and you don't want all the eyes to be drawn to you. Um, so that can be another piece of great stabilization gear. Lastly, guys, I want to just touch on some quick and easy tips that you can utilize for making your footage more stabilized. Um, overall, guys, you want to remember, if you are shooting handheld, please remember points of contact. The more points of contact you have, the better and more stabilized it is going to be. So for instance, if you are shooting handheld, do not hold your camera out like here. When you walk, everything is going to move like crazy if you bring it in tight. Lock those elbows in and hold it close to your body. Lock it in there. Don't move the camera, move with your body. And it's gonna make the image, this looks so goofy. Robot, ah, ooh, do, do, da, ah. <laughs> So much more stabilized and it's gonna look so much better. So remember keeping it in close to the body. The more points of contact you can create, the more stabilized your overall image is gonna be. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you picked up some great tips and pointers. Pick up those pieces of gear. I know you need them. You do too. Invest in yourself. Get out there and get creating. I'll see y'all next time.